Hello. 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 Oh wow. <laughs> so how are you guys all good yeah yeah, yeah. Good. how are you i'm good just yeah. a bit tired but i'm okay yeah we're all a little bit tired <laughs> you're holding Sunday. up yeah. pretty good today you're, yeah. you're holding up quite well so yeah. <laughs> that's what it's all about yeah, yeah. Um, so let's go over there. Do you want to have a seat? Yeah, I was going to say, I'll put my things here because we don't really need it. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I think I'm Be going to do the Gigi. same. So, <laughs> who, who are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Gigi Karma. This is IGV. Hi, I'm IGV. So she's the rapper, I'm the vocalist um, of the hip hop duo that is IGV and Gigi Karma. Um, so that's the two counterparts. Yeah. Bouncing off each other. Yeah, and, uh, there's, I know some people like don't know this, but we are actually twins. We do look alike, but some people would be like maybe sisters. Uh, we used to look a lot more alike, but now we have our own styles, as you can see. Yes, we so do. So we're a twin hip hop duo. Yeah, it's me and Gigi Karma. <laughs> Since we were very little, like we've always loved hip hop. Um, like I, I suppose it developed like in terms of music. Mm. I suppose maybe hip hop came in later in the teenage years, but like we always had a love for music from a young age yeah and we loved the uh, choir and acting and drama wow. and <laughs> all that kind of stuff you know yeah. and then obviously we used to sing a lot when we were kids yeah. we loved it and then obviously when we were teenagers that was when hip-hop was born in our lives really yeah it? actually when you think about it but uh our parents were uh, young parents as well so the part about that is that young parents usually still like to party and things like that so mm -hmm. you know our parents had really good taste in music and they were listening to English music as well and not just Lithuanian we're actually from Lithuania to people that don't know which part of Lithuania you're from we're from Mariampole Lithuania that's our hometown it's mm -hmm. quite a mouthful to say for people who've never heard Mariampole <laughs> yeah so it's about two hours from the capital city Vilnius right so yeah and how that's was for you guys growing up in there uh, growing up in Lithuania, yeah, like it would, like we would have enjoyed it a lot. I think, um, I think, I think I like having a childhood before the digital age kind of came in because yeah. we actually had a genuine childhood. Like we didn't have any of those major distractions in terms of like, you know, we did have a computer and we did have a few little yeah. gadgets at home, but um, we yeah. did have like a wholesome kind of like country life in terms of like city life and going to visit grandma and you know spending staying with friends on farms bananas, and yeah. Yeah, there was like a lot of kind of mixture of everything because I think our parents wanted us to understand that, you know, that we were privileged in, in a lot of ways, even though Lithuania wasn't doing as as well at the time financially. And that was one of the reasons why we yep. came to Ireland as a family. But we still were quite privileged in terms of yeah. what we had. Yeah, up, like you know? our, our mom is very much like a city woman. And then our dad, you know, he was very, he was very much like a type of you know I don't mind getting dirty he would like get really mm -hmm. messy fixing cars and things so he would kind of yeah. let us like run wild if he's like babysitting us that mm -hmm. day and our mom would be like always like don't get yourselves dirty wearing the nice clothes <laughs> so you can see like the balance of the two kind of playing around uh, how we got to be really wild and free from our dad's side and then from our mom's side is kind of more civilized and the social aspect of things so we kind of know how to do both and I, I feel very grateful for that because I think a lot of kids don't get both of those kind of mixes and and I think that's where we're kind of like wild and free, but we also try to be like civilized and socially acceptable as well in, in mm -hmm. that sense. But I think we had a good childhood. Uh, we stayed in the 20 till we were 11 years old and that's when we moved to Ireland. Oh yeah. yeah. So that was how long time ago? 18 years ago. 18? Mm -hmm. 18 years ago. Yeah. We're here in Ireland 18 years So ago. we're here longer than we are in Lithuania wow. now. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Thinking yeah. about it. But do you go there often or you just left? Actually, uh, before COVID, uh, we used to go every year at least once. And uh, now, ever since COVID kind of started to hopefully subside and, and flights kind of came back, I've been going back more frequently. I think there's mm -hmm. something during COVID, there's something inside of me that realized how much I actually miss my home country. And there's something inside of me that feels like I want to connect with the roots because I came here to Ireland really, really young. Mm -hmm. And that aspect of, I think there's something inside of me that kind of wants to know more of my culture now mm -hmm. um, and get to know like, where do I come from? 
what does that mean who am I how does that fit into my identity and things like that so I've been actually returning quite frequently I've been to Lithuania like three times already in the last half a year really? <laughs> yeah I seem to be returning and returning yeah, yeah you got a taste of it you keep coming back whereas uh, my story is kind of a bit more different like where I haven't went back for three years but I did go recently about a couple of weeks ago because we had to go over for our family kind of like cousin's wedding so we had to return as a family over to obviously celebrate his love for this woman and each other um, but I, I really did feel like there was a connection with, with my country because I forgot how many things I t took for granted yeah. that obviously Ireland has its own kind of cultural entity itself and then when I went back to Lithuania I really noticed the things that I missed that I forgot about that even existed exist and I think just the beautiful nature as well like there's so much beautiful nature over in Lithuania um, there's a lot of beautiful landmarks and things and we went to stay on the coast because Lithuania only has one coast it's like the Baltic Sea and we stayed there for a couple days and I didn't realize like how much I really miss the smell of like the Baltic Sea because like, it is different it's like it's weird to describe because obviously we have the Atlantic and all the other sea around us um, but the, the, like it really did smell like home, you know. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It really made me feel like connected, you know, to Lithuania. <laughs> yeah. That's sweet. So it was really necessary, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. I think I think no matter how many years like you live in a different country, I think your culture is always in your blood, and and I think that's what my blood is kind of waking up and saying, you know. Uh, learn more and want to learn more about my country and I think that's a very important thing for everybody to kind of discover more about themselves and what does that mean and where you come from and your uh, country's history and things like that yeah cool <laughs> Uh, I'm curious about one thing now. Yes. When did you discover that talent that you have, like with singing? Like, uh, you had any influence at home, or was some band that influenced you? How that started, like that click? So we started listening to a lot of hip hop music, and it was very much influenced, influential amongst our friend group. Yes. Um, Definitely by our influenced by our friends group very heavily. Yeah, and then um, we actually. So we would have been disconnected with making music at the time, but then we had a loss in our family. Yeah, we, um, we lost our dad at the age of 17, and that's when we decided to get back into music as a way to process a lot of the things. Because when you're when you're this young and you're always kind of protected by the world um, from the world by your parents and you have no idea of all the other bad stuff that's out there because you're that young and you're still kind of very much protected and unaware so when that happened it was a very big shock to us um as a family and um as as, as a to our system to, yeah. our, to ourselves yeah to our nervous system and having to deal with that so young and There's now a lot of grief to process wasn't there yeah and not really knowing that like oh my god stuff like this actually happens and you can you know our dad was always like very healthy and strong man and he was only like age of 42 so you never really thought you that like it's him that's gonna go first you know and so that was a lot of stuff to have to experience and that's when we decided to come back into music to to process our emotions yeah right and the music was still full of a lot of pain at the time because the that's literally the pain coming out and the grief coming out and uh, that's when you know things kind of started to clear that we started to focus on the process of actually performance then and, and say you know there's so much pain in the world and so much suffering that maybe we want to just have some fun more now on stage and and how can we do that how can we have a better stage presence how can the music be a little more catchy and kind of basically start to have fun as we move past that stage of our lives yeah and to get like really interacting uh, with our creative side and what we want to say and what our message is and you know as sort of like women standing in the music industry um, especially in a way and especially hip-hop mm -hmm. so that would have been kind of intense at first because it is a scary thing mm -hmm. it's like one moment people just know you as a regular person and then the next thing you're like oh I want to be a musician now <laughs> you know and, and it's kind of like bursting that illusion for a lot of people that perception that they might have had of you um, and then all of, a, all of a sudden you kind of nearly have to prove yourself at mm -hmm. first mm. but then you go through this like journey of processing you're like actually I don't need to prove myself to anyone I'm doing this only for myself 
because I love the creative, the creativity and the impact that music can have on other people. And we just started like writing and writing and writing. And I can mm -hmm. assure you at the beginning, there was a lot of shitty songs. <laughs> there was a lot of bad music at first. That, <laughs> that was never heard by any <laughs> writers. Ever. Yes, because yeah, <laughs> yeah. we, we wanted to make sure that the way that we wrote our lyrics kind of came across in a more original aspect that we found our own flow and like melodic uh, elements that we wanted to bring to our music and that we experimented with it to be, make sure that we can sound authentic to ourselves mm -hmm. and to yeah. whoever's listening that they know that there's probably not anybody else who sounds like us you know yeah and that's the fun part as well like as a female in hip-hop especially or and b kind of rap scene and when it comes to guys guys don't really want to get vulnerable when it comes to their lyrics and and that's the truth uh, there's very few guys that will kind of go there and you know speak about their feelings speak <laughs> about their heart mm -hmm. and like what's going on with them internally rather than kind of like portraying a certain facade of you know the rap game of like I'm the rapper in the in the rap game Try to and play hard look at me yeah. I'm rapping about girls and rapping about money and rapping about fast cars the fast life and I'm kind of like well actually we can bring a very different flavor to the table not only you know it doesn't mean we can't rap about these things but we can rap about so much more because it's almost there's so much more freedom being a female in the raps in the rap game in the rap scene and uh, we've, we've had a lot of fun with that I wrote a lot of music about actually you know my relationships my previous relationships but we have a lot of music about other stuff you know we talk with we, we don't mind going to the parts about the world that's like very socially taboo to discuss so we've written songs about like the rape kind of culture and what like what happens and the pain of that experience not that's that's something we experience ourselves luckily but um we felt like there's there's so many things out there that people are scared to talk about and yeah and we've chosen to talk about any other kind of topics so we've we kind of we've uh, had a song about called chrysalis about uh the gay uh, the, the gay community as well and kind of like how you know sometimes uh, someone's okay to be out there and, and loving someone where they fall in love with someone who doesn't want to be out there and who doesn't want to be out of the closet and things like that so you know it's like we want to kind of connect to people in very different ways um yeah and not be afraid to kind of um also learn a lot about the world through that process as well ourselves because it's like well we don't know much about that but i'd like to learn more and that's our way of connecting and many people actually have come forward when they've heard some of those different songs that touch on those very taboo topics we had people approach us and sharing their very personal vulnerable life stories which is crazy like to think that that open that kind of it created this open space for someone to actually approach and say share these very vulnerable parts that maybe they've never even talked about before never yeah. thought that they could yeah. and that's powerful yeah because I, I think thing. i think that song we wrote um about like uh, like rape culture and just like sexual harassment in general and uh, it was called Thief in the Night and I just remember like that like vulnerability you feel on stage because you're really you're really like poking the monster in the eye a little bit and mm -hmm. it's like it like I don't know it, it opens up this very strange strange energy in the room because it's like it's one of those things that people don't like to openly speak about mm -hmm. and you're really like you're really like shouting at people's faces with this subject and you're like look at it you know like this is this is the issue with our real. society like this mm -hmm. is something that needs our attention so it's kind of like you kind of have to be a little bit badass about it and, and sort of not be scared because there's so many people that get affected by this and like there's been girls that literally have approached us with their stories and it was it was actually very sad you know to hear and but they even said to us they were like it's so beautiful to see other women speak about this issue because they know how it directly affects us so it's like giving a voice to those that are directly affected by something so big um, yeah, we've been approached by like Galway Feminist Collective as well when they heard mm -hmm. our, our our set um, at uh, our first festival that we ever performed at, which was Eru, the Irish Burning Man. And oh, that's nice. actually how we got one of our gigs is because of the music and the lyrics and the content that it represented and how we kind of had created this voice for, for females and women. And just in general, like I said, opening discussions at people don't normally talk about and remember we got brought over to Galway and we got to stay there for the night and we got you know a book gig out of that and we got to be part of an amazing group of women that we got to meet and, and actually share our lyrics on the night that was that was crazy that was really yeah. cool yeah mm -hmm. yeah I remember reading a poem that night as well yeah yeah because I, I kind of write poetry so it's not just like lyrics that I write but like I suppose poetry is it's, like yeah. lyrics without the melody really uh -huh. yeah but um, I, I just like the delivery of a poem as well 
because it can also have like a whole other kind of feel to it with the way that you can deliver the idea, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's after like clouds after coming in. Really good idea. That's the beautiful unpredictability of Irish weather. <laughs> uh, kind of like a woman. <laughs> Mysterious and unpredictable, like Irish yeah. weather. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I saw your stories today. You, you and Pedro, Pedro wrote a song, right? Yeah, I did that with yeah. Pedro. How was that? It was good? Uh, yeah, so this year, after COVID, it's been a long time that people were able to like connect with each other. And during COVID, I was working on a lot of solo music, and Gigi was working on a lot of sol solo music, and discovering herself and myself as like uh, our sound, uh, because we have a very specific sound when we're together, when we're working together, and we were like, I really want to try something, and she wants to try something. So we've been playing around with our own kind of solo stuff, and then now that COVID is kind of away, hopefully forever, hopefully, and uh, I kind of came to this space where I was like, I really, really want to try collab with more people. So I'm very fortunate to have met Pedro before COVID, um, we've been meaning to make some music before COVID and then COVID happened and here we are nearly three, four years later finally, <laughs> finally making a song together uh, amongst many other amazing artists that's soon to be finished, nearly finalized collabs and um, Pedro is really fun to work with. He's got a very interesting creative work ethic and uh, that's what I wanted to learn is to see how every artist works and kind of learn from them. Maybe they mm -hmm. learn from me and th that's what I've, I wanted and mm -hmm. it's been wonderful. Yeah, I have a collab with Pedro as well coming. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, so I have, a, I have a beat that I picked out and I started writing some concepts. So yeah, we're gonna be kind of working on that together mm -hmm. as well. Cool. So it's, it's exciting, isn't yeah. it? Pedro, Pedro's the man. <laughs> <laughs> now you're the man. <laughs> Are you he's, listening, Pedro? He's gonna, he's gonna love this. Oh, he's, he's gonna, gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about like uh, your... Uh, like if I want to see your concert, like you have like any gig coming or? Uh, we actually are in collaboration with a couple of different like promoters and things. Um, we have a small little back garden kind of event slash party with another Brazilian artist that we're doing a collab with, AK47, uh, Kayo, hi. <laughs> uh, he's gonna be doing a really cool little mini event and we have other promoters from Galway that's gonna be doing potential small a small festival as well uh, in September, so there might be some stuff coming up then. But yeah. we won't give too much away. Yeah, <laughs> we like to set things in stone so we don't jinx the process. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So, yeah. Interesting. Can't wait to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better be well, there. Well, Hilbert, you saw us performing live already. Yeah. Um, I love it. And Pedro's birthday yeah. in Pepper McGee's. <laughs> so that was that was the first point of contact for you to experience our music. Well, yeah. what did you think of it? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I like like the difference between you and her. You know, like she's more rapping and you are more singing. Yes. I like that way. You know. I'm actually learning to rap as well. Oh yeah. 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 I'm trying to learn to sing. Mm. And yeah. It's been, it's been, oh, it's a, it's be been a journey. Yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's like we're trying to cross like boundaries with each other, like get out of our comfort zone, because we're so used to doing the thing that we do with best kind of thing. Yes. So now mm -hmm. we're trying to see what we're able to do and if we can learn any other kind of forms. Pushing, pushing the creative boundaries and uh, you kind of feel like a baby infant again because it's kind of like you're learning to walk again and you're like I was basically a speed runner just there when I was doing the rap and I was like you know <laughs> sprinted <laughs> great at it and I'm like I feel good I feel like I'm there you know I'm in a good place and then now it's like all over like you're like I'm, ta I'm learning I'm to like, walk again yeah. and <laughs> it's it's so vulnerable to remember what it was like when I first started rapping and I get that mm -hmm. same exact feeling I'm like back to square oh one. my god is this good is yeah. this bad and you have to when you're trying something new like this you have to get past that stage of the discomfort because mm -hmm. when you're learning something new it's gonna be uncomfortable especially because it's a public kind of uh, creative thing that you share with mm -hmm. the, with people and you're like oh my god but you have to you have to keep going you have to push yourself past that point yeah. until mm -hmm. you start to get a little bit comfortable mm -hmm. just enough to keep going and then that's find when it your starts rhythm. to find get your better rhythm. and better and better find your flow find your yeah. rhythm yeah the creative process just kind of unravels eventually, I think. 
if you're open to it. If you're open yeah, because you should never resist the creative process because mm -hmm. it kind of has its own way of coming about, and you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Stay open and have fun. The most important thing is have fun with the process because that's when you're not overthinking things. Creativity is all about kind of like staying open, you know, kind of like don't be afraid to make mistakes and have fun. Like literally, that's what the, I would say the mistake, The mistakes is where most of the growth takes place. Yeah. So like you have mm -hmm. to like, you know, they say fall flat on your face every so often before you get to like do it properly again and again and, and be again. okay with it and embrace mm -hmm. it. It's yeah. part of it. It's part of life. Part of the building blocks. I think sometimes mm -hmm. people get so fixated with the whole perfectionist aspect of making something and you're like, oh, it has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect actually. But we were, we were definitely there like for a long time. We were like, oh my God, this let's do it again it's not it's not it's not the way i wanted it's not the way i wanted but now we're kind of like it's okay there'll be mm -hmm. you know other songs and even better songs and just sort of like have fun like and keep going and get out of your own head it's so too easy to get into mm -hmm. your own head especially artists people who are artists understand that we are our own worst critics mm -hmm. we really are yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. getting past that inner voice and even imposter syndrome like imposter syndrome mm, is such a big thing a no big matter one. how far you get you always think oh Jesus this is probably not that good mm -hmm. not that good and you need to hear that little voice inside your head and say to yourself wait a minute the fact that you're putting in so much work and effort you need to already acknowledge that to the fact that you're working towards something and you're putting in the effort and you're putting in the time and that in itself is quite an achievement because it's a commitment and you're making this commitment to yourself creatively uh, where you want to be and that's super super important that's nearly more important than you kind of getting into that space like is it good or oh my god mm. um very important stuff yeah so i think oh, yeah. i was just already kind of feeling better oh yeah the, cross, um, the cross legged position yeah um <laughs> so i was like feeling good inside myself so mm -hmm. i was like being more open yeah <laughs> we already covered a good bit of the ground yeah today. yeah that's good i'm really happy get a nice little walkie zen <laughs> bit of exercise and fresh air two birds on stone <laughs> hello hi hello. how's it going Good. <laughs> Getting so much fresh air. I'm like super giddy now because there's like so much oxygen. Natural high, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> a bird said something about you're gonna release an EP, yeah? So the, the EP is called The Clo Clone Complex Part 1. Um, and we came up with the concept kind of... Uh, it was coming from a space of people becoming a product of their environment and you know society kind of shaping humans in today's world and sort of like people struggling to find themselves and kind of going through little moments of existential crisis kind of like you know asking themselves the question of who the hell am i you know yeah and sure. um this was kind of like one of those eps that we started writing there's kind of a number of different songs and they have a lot of different emotions and different kind of concepts in it um, but I, I suppose it was certain questions that we were asking ourselves and then certain feelings that we were having and I think our, ourselves our connection to the clone complex the whole concept we created was because we're twins a lot of the times people would have identified us as one and the same person mm -hmm. so a lot of people wouldn't really understand what that feels like but we do and we really struggled over the years to find ourselves in terms of our identities and i think when we were teenagers like we started dressing differently because yeah. our mother actually used to dress us exactly the same identical and we wanted to when um, we were younger we did we loved actually looking the same when we were kids and then came to a certain point where we started really asking ourselves that question like who are we yeah and we really started experimenting um getting interested in different types of like music and art and clothing and different friend groups and you know school school activities um really really started finding ourselves um so uh then uh the clone complex also like when she was saying the part about like society and people having like identity crisis nowadays for especially big influence from social media um mainly because everybody's kind of dressing the same 
want to look like other celebrities, you know, the when it comes to like aesthetically kind of people doing aesthetic procedures and things like that. And, you know, everybody's starting to look like very similar or, or like a big influence from, I suppose, the filters as well, like Instagram filters and things like that. And you're like, oh, I want to look like her. How can I do that? And getting the lip fillers and whatever. And even guys, like, you know, guys are much more groomed than they used to be back in the day. And there's just such an emphasis on appearance and people are forgetting to like get to know who am I inside besides my appearance besides my exterior if I take that away who am I like what's left what's there and so that's kind of the idea of the clone complex uh, we're planning to come uh, to release it very very soon actually it's been a long time coming actually it's been pretty much ready before COVID but uh, now we've been fortunate enough to release it through some of the Arts Council funding as well with the whole um, funding that was released for musicians after kind of the effects from post-COVID, you know, the, the, music the agility industry. award. Yeah, yeah, the music industry kind of being shut down for such a long time. So we've been fortunate enough to receive it and now we're able to bring the quality that we really like and there's going to be some new music and surprises and other bonus tracks that we don't want to give too much away. Uh, but we're very excited to finally release this project and then move on to other amazing things and yeah um, like I said many collabs on the way some solo projects it's gonna be some out. remixes of the tracks as remixes well of the tracks as well well we're not gonna say too much about that but <laughs> yeah <laughs> we like to keep a little bit of mystery yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting I think people are gonna de see a very different side to us and I think there's gonna be a lot of growth for people to experience in terms of how far we've come in terms of our artistry um, and I think as human beings, like there's been so much growth in just writing those songs and asking those questions and coming to the conclusion of whatever it is that we found out in the end, you know? And the fun fact that people don't know is we actually had the entire EP recorded before that, but because we got the funding, we said to ourselves, you know, we've come a long way after COVID, uh, like two years, three years later, we're like, let's re-record it completely because we know we're going to perform it even better this time. So let's start completely fresh. So it's going to be completely fresh recordings of the mm. updated AGV and Gigi Karma and that's that's really fun to to share with the world and finally put it out there. Uh, we have a website we set up for people to have easy access anywhere that you are to be able to order the hard copies when they're available. There's going to be lots of merch. As you can see, I'm wearing the merch here at GV and Gigi Karma merch. Yeah. There's little um, caps and bucket hats. Little caps and, and, and festival kind of themed uh, style clothes and things. And there's going to be little lyric books that people can kind of open and own themselves as well and kind of read through it. And there's going to be some handwritten sides to it and then the typed up version so you can kind of have our writing style and then have the actual typed up style which is really cool little mm. element too um, and yeah just really happy to finally bring ourselves to that standard that we always wanted to have and having now the finances to kind of bring it up to that stage and, and see what comes from there from that space I, yeah and, and I think next. I think we both feel like it's it's gonna open a lot of doors for us yeah um, just for people sure. to see the side to us now you know more polished edgy V and Gigi Karma <laughs> <laughs> and we can't wait to share that with you guys yay yes. <laughs> thanks guys thank yeah. you Thank you, thank you so good. much for listening and yeah. wh whoever listened to the entire experience. <laughs> yeah, fair play to you. <laughs> and you say your you social media, me. like uh, yeah. So yeah. my my uh, Instagram is uh, double G Karma with a C, so G G Karma, right. and and I'm EGV on Instagram, but my full name is like Agla Valnite dot Agla Valnite, but you can easily find me if you just put an EGV. So when you get this really long name, with, <laughs> you'll know that's me. <laughs> I put that below. Yeah, All and right. uh, and we have our YouTube, EGV and Gigi Karma YouTube, um, Spotify, GigiKarma.com. Yeah, EGV and Gigi Karma dot com is the website. So like Gigi said, Karma with a C. So EGV and Gigi Karma dot com. That's where you'll have all the access and any social media that you want to find, any of the merch, any of the hard copies of the EP when they're available, and any other updates. So yeah. Thanks.